Um, so first of all, I want to do a quick draw poll. And because I don't have time to count you all, and now I can't see you all, we're going to do it by using claps. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And when you would normally put your hand up, I'd like you to just clap once. You get it? You get it? Excellent. OK, so question one. Who here thinks that they work on a legacy code base? Uh, who here would like to have a very serious word with some of the people that worked on that legacy code base? Yeah, yeah. So I clap for the first one, but not for the second one. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you about today. So what the hell does this have to do with Swift? Because Swift is really, really young, right? I mean, it doesn't really have any legacy. Well, there were those breaking changes in 1.x. And last year, I heard at least three talks where people said either that uh, Objective-C was a deprecated language, uh, a legacy language, or that Objective-C is a dinosaur. Um, I'm sure you were 100% Swift already, right? And then, of course, there's Michael Feather's uh, uh, statement that legacy code is code without tests, but you all have 100% coverage, right? So uh, at some point, most of you will probably be working on a legacy code base. And when this happens, it's usually to go through a few stages of grief. There's denial. Anger. <laughs> followed by bargaining. And then depression. And finally, just acceptance. <laughs> but what's wrong with this? Well, I say it's self-centered, and it's actually a bit misdirected as well. See, instead of thinking that the code was the work of some feckless idiot, we could instead assume that it was somebody like us. I mean, I'm not saying there were no feckless idiots out there. I've been a feckless idiot at least a couple of times, as some people who worked on my code base will tell you. Um, but if we think about it as maybe it was us, like how could the code have ended up like this? Why did the app delegate become 2,000 lines? Well, OK, perhaps they knew no better. I mean, start a new project, hit that core data button, and look at the code. The app delegate is 112 lines before you've done anything. So you know, maybe that person just didn't know any better. I mean, that's just as plausible, right? And the other thing is that even if you don't want to put yourself in the developer's shoes, well, think about the team that you work with and put yourself in their shoes. Like, if you're joining a project and you tell everyone that the code base is terrible and, it, and you feel like sucking on a lemon every time you're using it, well, how do you think that makes that team feel? Like, why don't you try empathizing with that team? You know, many of these people will be professionally, emotionally, maybe even financially invested in that project, a project that you're saying is just legacy. And if that's not enough, well, how about this? I think it makes you look unprofessional, and it makes us all look unprofessional. And the reason is, if you go around telling employers what a terrible job the developers before you did, what are you really telling those developers, those employers? You're telling them that people who work in our industry, you know, we're shoddy, we're unreliable, we're expensive, and we're egotistical. That anything that we do will be dead in a couple of years' time. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is next time you look at a code mess and you hit that, co that git blame, try feeling some empathy first instead of anger. Because who knows, that git blame might even be your name. Thank you. Yeah.